This is my old 150 watt 8 port Unify switch. It's getting a bit old and tired and grumpy. So in this video, we're going to replace it with this, the Pro Max 16 PoE switch. I've been put in the cupboard again. It happens. This is my old uh, 150 watt 8 port switch, which is one of the first devices I got, or Unify devices, for this farm network upgrade journey that I've been on. And I got this in February of 2020, so almost five years ago. Um, so it's done a lot. And it's been sitting in here ever since on this wall, uh, just chugging away, not really skipping a beat, to be honest, it's quite reliable, but I am going to upgrade it for a couple of reasons. First of all, I'd really like PoE++ for new devices that are coming because a lot of them will need more power. The Pro Max 16 will do that. It has PoE++ ports. Um, and of course it has 16 ports. This one has eight. And as you can see, they are full. Well, there's seven of them are full, but there's an eighth device that normally live here. So I am out of ports as well in this area of the farm. So that's why we are going to replace it. Now, this can be mounted in a number of ways, which I'll get to, but we're going to put it in a uh, server cabinet, which I'm actually sitting on because there was no other room um, that I'm going to hang up on the wall here and install this in. But first, I think we need to open this box and look at all the options of what it can do and what we get. Um, and then we'll install the server rack and then the, the switch into it. All right, let's see what's in the box. And of course, this is a switch. So I'm going to do what we all know. This, it's probably become a habit now, routine, isn't it? It's mandatory. You ready? Mm. Anyway, all right. So in here we have the usual nice unified packaging. So I'm gonna take this one out first. We'll get to that in just a second. That's heavy, probably power supply. And here's the switch itself. And nothing else, good. Whee! So this comes very nicely packaged again, secure. And it's a little switch because it's only 16 ports and it has, there's a reason it's a bit small and the reason we have this mounting template. So this is the uh, USW Pro Max 16 PoE, because it has PoE of course. And we have 12 PoE plus ports and we have four PoE plus plus ports that are also two and a half gigabit as well as two SFP ports that are 10 gigabit and of course a reset button. Now this is cool because you know I like these four ports of PoE++, we get more power out of those. I like the two and a half gigabit connections because I'm upgrading everything to two and a half or 10 gigabit uh, internally on the farm for because I'm moving large files. So that's really cool and of course we have the display here, the mandatory ubiquity display. Um, then we have some mounting points and of course this this is meant to be uh, mounted on a wall like the other one I had over there in the, in the cupboard or be mounted on a desk or wherever but of course you can also rack mount it and that's what these are for so if you take these off oh, I can't do that with my nails now mm -hmm. nope we'll get to that we'll take these off and you can mount uh, your rack mount to it and the other side is the same there and then there is a power supply here, which is a it says 54 volt, 3.9 amps. So it comes with it. So here's the mounting template that we probably won't use, but you can uh, mount it on the wall like that. Here is the other box, which is of course the mounts here. So these are the rack mounts or wherever you want to mount it kind of things. Is oh, it's hard to get out. The power supply itself. Oh, come on. It's stoic. There we go. That is the power supply here. A uh, very ubiquity, a Unify sort of design. This says on it, 210 watts. So a lot of oomph in that one. Of course that goes in there. And we have the rubber feet if you want to just have it sitting on your desk. And here's the tool that I was trying to break my nails not having used. So there's the tool to open the sides, we'll get to that. And then there's a bunch of screws of course if you do want to mount it on the wall. I'm going to rack mount it, which means I have this. So you buy this separately. This is the Pro Max 16 rack mount. So let's see what that looks like. I mean, you can kind of see it on here. The idea is that one side go, you know, either side. Another box, yay! <laughs> All right, we have a large bracket here. Goes on one side and a smaller one for the other side. Then we have the 
This is like a tray. And this tray is where you put the power supply in, right? That goes in there, very snug, very neat. It fits exactly like that. And then the power port comes out, oh, somewhere. Oh, you can even put the cable, uh, the uh, power cable goes in there. This goes to the switch. And then this goes on the side of the switch. Bunch of rack mount paraphernalia, cable nuts, etc. And then there is another plastic tray probably for the top here. Okay, so I think that's it. That's all that's in the box. Now let's get the rack on the wall. The Pro Max 16 PoE is in. I've chosen a rack mount for this, as you saw with the rack mount accessory, but of course you can mount it anywhere else you want. It's very versatile. You put it on just on your desk or on sideways or whatever. Um, these 16 ports have comes with PoE Plus, PoE Plus Plus. I've mentioned that. That is very cool. It has two and a half gig, 10 gigs, but we'll look at all that in Unified Networking in just a second. Um, I did do a bit of a um, screw up maybe at the start because I put all the PoE um, well, the, the the keystones of my uh, patch panel I put them on the left of course all the ports are in the middle so I've changed that I fixed it so it's all good but yeah that was a bit of uh. and by the way these keystones are rubbish I bought them they're cheap I bought them a long time ago don't buy cheap keystones they are the bane of my existence and I have new ones coming and everything will be sorted but it's like having a dodgy cable. Suddenly something doesn't work. You're like, huh? what's happening? So don't do that. Just a friendly tip here. Um, but let's figure out what all these colors do on these, pa on these cables and what they mean and what else this switch does by, we gotta go into Unify Protect. We gotta go into Unify Network rather. Protect is something else. But to do that, we gotta go into Unify Network. So let's do that. All right, we are now in Unify Network. And here are all my switches. As you can see, I've chosen switches. So we're gonna to go to the USW Pro Max 16 PoE, which is obviously the one we just installed. Uh, and if you've ever seen a Unify switch before in this uh, Unify network application, it will look very similar. But you can see here we now have 16 ports all here, and we have two SFP ports as well, port 17 and 18. I'm not using those yet, but let's see, we might get that to that in another video. Um, 
Of course, there's a bigger version of this as well, which is the Pro Max 24 PoE, which I do have and I have uh, done a video on, which is linked there. You go check that out. And there's also a 48 port PoE version as well, which I do not have. Um, so you can go to the port manager here, as with any other Unify switch, and we can see here what is connected to it. Uh, port one is the Giga uh, Beam Max. Uh, so that is also another video that you can check out there. <laughs> um, that is my connection between, from this building to the main building and the UDMSE. Um, so that is a UISP device. That is why it's not showing up here. Um, port two is the connection to the pump shed switch. That is a um, switch flex. So this is one of those outdoor, not outdoor rated, but you can get an outdoor enclosure or utility case for it. We have here the uh, outdoor access point on that building on outside of Chris's place. There is a the indoor access point. There is the uh, alarm cam three. There is the PTZ camera as well, which there's also a video on, of course there is. And then there is the link to the machinery shed, which is also a switch flex. So this particular switch is actually directing traffic quite a few places. Um, so it's kind of important. But of course, you can see how much power they're using, which I use a lot. If there's something I'm not sure about, I look at how much power they're using, if they're overheating or whatever it might be. Um, so yeah, the power consumption is quite useful. And as always, you can look at any of the ports and see what is going on. So like with the main one here, uh, we can rename them, etc., etc. So there is nothing different from that um, from other switches. So let's just go back and look at specifically the um, not that one, the Pro Max 16 here. Uh, so that's the port manager. You can see the power budget is 180 watts. We're using 22 watts, so <laughs> plenty of stuff to go. But those PoE++ ports are rated up to like 60 watts, I think it is, per port. So we can get up there pretty quick if we start connecting things. Um, here's again the ports and what they're connected to. There's some uh, uh, data here about the IP address, both V4 and V6. I'm not sure I've seen that before. Interesting. All right. I don't use V6 addresses for IP, but OK. Uh, uptime, you can see it's three hours since we turned it on. Uh, and the temperature of it is 45 degrees. So it's getting sort of towards the evening now. But uh, yeah, it, I think that room can get pretty hot. So we might want to put a fan in there. And then there is something about the parent device. Uh, this says primary port. Um, 24 port max so that's my pro max 24 uh port one because that's where the giga beam is connected it can't actually see the giga beam but fair enough and you can see that you're using about six watts of power so not a lot not a lot for the switch itself so that's all right there is not much here there's a bit about the history of it um you know it's updated to version that and you can see which clients are on it here and what happened to those clients and then we have the system statistics as well um which is about cpu and memory usage now the interesting bits are of course under the settings here so we can give it a new name i'm going to leave that for the minute that's uh it'll work for now i'm thinking what that name should be but then we have of course have the ether lighting settings so these are the lights that comes out of the switch on which you need compatible um, patch cables such as the ones I put in from Unify, which gives you that nice glow of colors. Now, the colors, of course, have meaning. So by default, they come as speed. So each port will show you how much or how fast it is in terms of network speed. If it's green, it's fast internet or 100 megabit. If it's white, it's gigabit. If it's blue, it's two and a half gigabit. And again, if it's white, it's 10 gigabit. And you can, of course, change these. So if you wanted the gigabit to be a different color, just click on it and you can change it to whatever, you know, say red. Go, wow, red is really fast, right? Wee! So fair enough. Uh, you can have, set the brightness of those and you can put breathing mode on or off. So that's sort of the pulsing of it. So if you don't like that, you can just turn that off and it'll just be on there full time. Um, and then, of course, we can change it to network. So if you don't want it to show speed, we can show it, We can make uh, the colors show the network that can attach to. So that's the VLAN that the particular port is on. Um, I have all of the ports as default right now, default VLAN. Um, but you could change that if you want it to be on a different virtual LAN. And again, you can still breathe breathing mode, etc. I'm just going to leave it on speed. That's fine. I do like the red for gigabit because it's fast, right? rather than just white. <laughs> I don't know. Um, we can uh, set a static IP address here. If you want to override the network, you say proceed with caution. Yep, I'm not going to allow that anyway. But if you're using a VLAN, you can mess things up. 
And then there's the advanced settings here. So I'm using the global, global switch settings. I don't know enough about switches and what are all the different um, settings and features do. I do have it as a goal to understand it properly and I will make a video about it when I do because then you can all comment below and tell me if I'm right or not. Um, but you can certainly change the settings here. If you untick the global switch settings, you can start changing all of the uh, settings. In this case, for jumbo frames, flow control, 802.1x control, and spanning tree protocol as well. But I'm going to leave it as global switch settings. And then we can manage the brightness of the display. And here is one of those things that is kind of neat. I like the little details. Because you can install this uh, switch in many different ways. You can have it as I have it as a rack, you can have it on a desk, you can have it side mounted, vertical, whatever. You can change the display rotation. So you can move it around. So if you install it upside down this switch in whatever location you have, you can move it 180 degrees and you will get this the display the right way. That's a neat feature. It's a little thing, it's a little delightful feature. I like that. We can then change night modes and we can rack multi screens what is that well, i don't know what that is sync the screen settings and screen navigation between all screens oh okay uh i'm not sure what that is let me know in the comments i think it has something to do with if you have multiple screens with little leds you know the 1.3 inch display you can sync all those in a rack so i'm not sure how i choose which rack they're in because i have three different racks hmm. so yeah the rack that we put up uh, in that room and that cupboard essentially was the old rack I had in the office which was replaced by the huge uh, rack solutions rack yeah so reuse yay and then we have uh, an existing device configuration we can choose that if I had one I don't have any other uh, that I use they're all individual again I don't know enough about switches to actually start making use of this but that will come I am learning that's the Pro Max 16 PoE switch from Unify um, I, I'm, I quite like it. Um, I really, really like the Pro Max 24. That's a proper rack mount 24 port with lots of grunt. Um, but if you need a little bit less, like I do in this case, because I'm just going from eight ports to, well, maybe a bit more, and I want to have, you know, future proof it a bit, so 16 ports is great, but you get PoE Plus on 12 ports. You get PoE Plus Plus on four ports, and you get 180 watts of power on, well, on 16 ports, and you get two and a half gigabit connection as well, as SFP over 10 gigabit, there's a lot of grunt. There's a lot of features in this little switch, let's call it. Um, I chose the rack mount on it. You do not have to do that, of course. You can mount it wherever you want. That is one of the appeals of it, is that it has so many ways that you can mount it and use it. That is uh, one of the selling points, I guess. I, that's, I quite appreciate that. Now, I want it in that, in that uh, server rack, so I wanted to rack mount it. I like the little case that comes with it. Well, not comes with it, but you buy separately as an accessory, but it's just neat. It's just neat. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think about this. I think this is probably one of the go-to sort of smaller home setup switches that just will power everything. But uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. Is this something you would use? Uh, is there something you don't like? Is there something I missed? Have any questions? Let me know. And as always, if you like the content, consider subscribing. That really helps out the channel because this year, 2025, I am aiming for 50,000 subscribers, which is a lot. But I think we can do it. I think we, I really think we can do it. So yeah, help me out if you can. I really appreciate it. Leave a comment, um, click the thumbs up, whatever. Uh, check out the merch. There's always merch, right? For example, there's uh, these lovely Spit Happens mugs. I designed that. I like it. Yeah. Um, but thanks so much for watching. The next video is going to be, I'm not sure. There's so many things that I want to do. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. video. Thank you for watching. Bye.